He let no, her in. the no, female guard wasn't Commander Pollard. Hold on, I'm gonna go get my book. Give me a minute, cause I am like ninety nine point five percent sure I'm about this. I'm hundred percent sure. I need to prove you wrong. Hold on. I mean, I can go get my book. Figure my this right out. There. My book's right there. Do you want to go grab mine? All right. Well, I mean, like, we'll both go grab it. One of us will find it first. Go. What's up, everyone? I'm Stephen Iman. And I'm Ankit Madeira. And welcome back to Flip the Scripts. Uh, this week, we're still on Hunger Games The Mockingjay Part 2. We're about to yeah. finish the trilogy! <laughs> we'll finish the trilogy, but so y'all know, next week, we're hopping. Still in the Hunger Games, we're still in the <laughs> Hunger Games franchise. We're not everyone. leaving the franchise! <laughs> We're going to the prequels, episode, the prequels that came out like literally like six months ago. I don't even think it was six months ago. Maybe when this aired, it'll. Probably I think it f- came out early twenty twenty four. No, I thought it came out early twenty twenty four. No, because I I saw it when I went home for Thanksgiving. If you remember, with my with my sister. Oh, okay, okay. Remember, I'm how looking I it left up right now for Thanksgiving because I was like, I need to go home for something. Yeah, yeah, it was twenty twenty three. Yep, I don't November, know when in 2023, but late 2023, I guess. November. Ch- sure. I saw it when it first, like, it came, okay. So we're going to be doing that film <laughs> next week. Uh, so we're really excited. Well, well, next week for you guys and, well, next week for us as well. And so we're yeah. really excited to hop into a prequel. We've never done a prequel on this channel, so we get to compare that to the original. Yay. But let's finish the trilogy today. <laughs> We do need to do that. That seems like an important task. So, as you know, every time we start a part two, I come up with a question for Ankit to answer. This time, I didn't tell him what it was. I was saving this question, but I think it works better here. So, Ankit, I'm kind of borrowing from your other show really quick. Hey, If you could be any character in this franchise, not just this movie, but the franchise... The first three movies, the trilogy. Who would you play and why? I think I'd want to play PETA the most. Ooh, fair. Is it like his story? His, like his, he always wins or like what's up? No, no, no. Not that he always wins. I think what makes PETA's story so compelling mm. is he goes through so much. And I think as an actor, it would just be really fun to play all of those. Like, I would get to play in love. And I would get yeah. to also then play scared and, like, not sure what I'm doing, but, like, trying to be confident. But then at the same time, by the time we get to the third film, I get to play third, fourth, I don't know. what the, the Mockingjay. By the time we get to Mockingjay, I get to play, like, villain. And, like, I feel like that would be very fun to play all of them. Mainly yeah. because I'm also not old enough to play Hamish. Otherwise, I would have loved to play Hamish. But I understand that, like, especially when I shave my beard, I look more like a teenager than I do, like, a 50-year-old man. Yes, Flute, you have a beard coming. <laughs> I, thank you! <laughs> no, I was making... Okay, never mind. I was making a joke about when uh, we made the... I know, I know, I know. The, the one hair. Okay, never mind. Um, I got the joke. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think I would play. I would really love to play Plutarch, and I know I'm way too young to play Plutarch. But the idea of playing like a bubbly game maker who wants to fight against the capital, who still doesn't really understand what he's fighting for, and is actually really kind of done, dense in a lot of ways, I think would be really, really fun. Fair. Uh, someone said Philip, character... Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman knew what he was doing too much <laughs> as a, as an actor. 
Because <laughs> I think Plutarch in the books Look, is a lot more bubbly and a lot more dense, and I love it. Here's the problem. Is that Plutarch in the film read the source material. Yes, that's that's probably exactly <laughs> what Like, I've never said that that's a bad thing before, but he understood the source material too well. Did I say material? Or material? You did say material. Okay, okay. But I said material. materials. Yeah, and source like, books materials. <laughs> material, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you say material? I don't know. Look, if I messed up, oops. <laughs> Game of Thrones? What? Okay, moving on. Um. Okay, so here we are. I mean, we could do the Song of Ice and Fire if we ever wanted to hop back into season one of Game of Thrones. I've never that seen the... Game of Thrones. Ooh, that could I've be never fun. read Game of Thrones. I've never read it. I'd like to read it. I've watched it. I mean, season, the last season's terrible and not based on any books, so we only have to watch the first three seasons. Cool. I feel like at that point I'd be invested, but then I know that I'm being set up for sadness, so like I don't know if I really want to watch this show. But like, I hear the hey. new prequel is good though, so if you watch this and you suffer like everyone else did when Game of Thrones came out, and then you go watch the prequel, at least you'll be happy again. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay, so we're hopping back right into Mockingjay Part 2, right in the middle of the action, where we left off Woo. Katniss Everdeen and the crew of 513? 455. 451, sorry. 451. Numbers are hard. He got there, ladies and gentlemen. He got there. He got there. I got there. I got there. 451. (laughs) People have already died on the team. PETA killed the guy. Sadness. And the twins are dead because they fought dying. And Boggs is dead. Boggs died. Yeah, Boggs died. So we. A lot of people are dead. I think we we did the math, and what, we have eight people left? Yeah. Nine people left. Eight or nine. Eight or nine. I think in the book, it's ten, and then in the film, it's eight or nine. Yeah, something like that. Because 451 has... The characters and... 451 has Katniss Peta, Boggs, his assistant, Jackson. Wait, 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 wait. Should we just count the people who are living at this point rather than the ones who have died they're okay. gone Katniss We're just Pita, trying to figure out who's alive Jackson Cressida Pollux a uh caster that's six am I missing anybody oh Mitchell no Mitchell died Gail Mitchell die? Gail did Mitchell die or did the other guy die one of them's still alive I don't know I one of them is me. alive I think Mitchell died. So the I, other no, guy I think can... Mitchell's the one that Peter kills. Yeah, yeah, but the other guy, Holmes, Holmes, Holmes is alive. Holmes, Holmes, and then Mezzaline, who's not in the book, not in the film in this part, but is alive in the book. Right. And I think that's it. So nine in the book, eight in the film. Cool. All right, where are we doing? Oh, where oh, are we going? oh, oh! We've heard the oh. most important character. Finnick <laughs> I'm so sorry, Finnick. Oh, my heart goes out to you. Honestly, so, so, that's the other character I would have wanted to play. If I didn't play Peta, I'd want to play Finnick because Finnick fair. is ten, beautiful. ten in the book, nine in the film because Mezzaline's not with them apparently, according to Ankit. I swear he was there. Ankit says he wasn't there, so we're gonna go with what Ankit says for this one. Look, if I'm wrong, just bash me in the comments, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I did ask what. I mean, Mezzaline was like in the really important in the book for him to just disappear like that is crazy so here we are pollux says hey let in a sign language to his brother caster he's like hey let's go underground let's let's go underground and they do sign language to each other and it's beautiful pollux is an avox and apparently when people become avoxes they're forced to work underground in the capital this is new information that we find out in the book this is exactly told to us in the film really good job and you get a sense of, like, they had to buy Pollux kind of out of slavery for him to be able to do what he loves to do, which is filming things. Yeah. I and wanted to A-boxes point out... have such a sad story. They really do. I wanted to point out two things. One, we may have discussed this in the last episode. I just do not remember, because if we did talk about it, it was at the very, very tail end of the episode. But uh-huh. one thing that they missed is that 
they actually take disguises from the like apartment that they were hiding in. Mm -hmm. And they don't do that in the film. And the other one is they cut out PETA's line saying like to Pollux, you are now our most valuable member. Yeah, and I really like that because it shows that PETA is kind of turning back to normal a bit and PETA can still be normal with 5451 where PETA is not normal with Katniss and it really affects Katniss's psyche a bit that, that they're not normal still, but he could be normal with them. Yeah, people. and it was like also because it showed that PETA knew what to say. Like nobody else knew what to say in that moment, but then PETA's the one that chimes in saying, you're our most valuable member. And Katniss realizes in the book, Katniss realizes in the book that like, okay, Peter's coming back to normal. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, even when no one knows what to say, he's not saying anything rude, but it's also having like an air of like a joke kind of deal. Like, you know, it's still very sincere, but there's a little bit of a hint of like a, <laughs> we can giggle at this kind of like, you know, let's be a little silly, even though the situation is very dire. I would also say, I believe that in the book, it's Katniss's idea to go underground. Katniss is like, we have to go underground. And Pollux is like, he's the first one to freak out about it. And then Castor explains that Pollux used to work underground. But in the film, Castor and Pollux volunteer for it. I don't think Pollux would volunteer to go back underground if he had the choice. Like, I don't think that's I don't a think, character choice. I don't think he would have chosen that i liked in the book how katniss really took charge it still doesn't feel like you know katniss mm -hmm. is technically in charge but it doesn't feel like katniss is in charge it just feels like katniss is bringing bra along exactly so katniss in the book is leading the charge she's like we're gonna go to a maintenance tunnel and that's how we're gonna get into the tunnels underground in the book the maintenance tunnels are in a house like they're in people's houses so they're the, they're the cheapest houses on the block if you have a maintenance tunnel in your house sorry that's basically how the capital operates but in yeah. the film the maintenance tunnel is just out in the open which i think is a lot weirder that they can just walk right into a maintenance tunnel that's out in the open it's a little weird but also like it's a little more like how cities are actually built like, but in I think real there's life. more like the capital being very like capital, you know, still hierarchical in their own society where they're like, you can afford a house, but you have to afford the house with the maintenance tunnel where other people. Yeah, it would have been nice to see. I wasn't really fussed about it. So Fair. then we cut to a brand new scene that's not in the books, everyone. It's another President Snow scene. So we cut to Egeria, who is the vice president of pan am i don't know what her role is they never really explain that she it's exists just snow's assistant let's just call her snow's assistant for now she Beautiful. walks in a scene and he's asleep snow is asleep on his desk he looks like he's dead because blood's coming out of his mouth she wakes him up he's like oh, oh 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 what why'd you wake me up and she lets him know that katniss is still alive and he's mm -hmm. like oh it's time to go after her and kill her that's the whole scene. Yay! How do you feel about that scene, Ankit? Another addition from President Snow. It wasn't needed, but fine. I just felt like it slowed the action a bit. Like, again, like, this yeah. action pace thing of the book where, like, we're just, we'll keep going towards the mansion for Katniss's point of view, I think is a lot more interesting than cutting to Snow, who were like, yeah, he's already wanting to kill her. Like, like you don't need to, like, tell us again and again, Snow wants to kill Katniss, Snow wants to kill Katniss, Snow wants to kill Katniss. Like, again, I think if they had that scene, but then they had Snow be a little more surprised that Katniss survived. There was no surprise. He was just like, Haha, cool. She ran away. Let's just kill her again. Yeah. Like, there was no surprise. So. So we then cut back to President Snow. Uh, President Snow. We cut from President Snow. I'm sorry. I do apologize. We cut from President Snow back to Katniss and 451. And Katniss is leading the charge into the underground. Because she can't have led them to the tunnel. But Pollux is supposed to lead us once we're in the underground. Because Pollux understands the underground way better than the pod can. Oh, what is it? The, the, the sonar thing? The tablet that she has? What's it called? The hob. The hob. Yeah. Hollow. It's the hollow. 
Oh, the hob yeah, is it's else. the hollow. Hob is, you know, dead. <laughs> yeah, the hob died in book two. <laughs> um, let's have a moment of silence for the hob. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, cool, moving on. Uh, so the hollow, uh, but Pollux is better than the hollow because Pollux lived in the underground for so long. Mm-hmm. But they explain it, but they don't really do it. I, I think it's a bit weird. Then they get to a tunnel and they're going to rest for the night, which is oh, hold really on. good. Before we get to the resting part, you know how as they're running through the tunnel, there's a train that shows up and they all hide? Yeah. Yeah, where Katniss was hiding, she would have been seen by the train. Because at least the others all went into the other tunnel to hide. Katniss was, like, literally just on the barrier in between the two tunnels. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on video, it'll be easier to understand because I have my hands to, like, show you what I mean. <laughs> Listeners on audio, I'll do my best to describe this. So, imagine it's two tunnels that are, you know, converging. It's two separate tracks, but they're about to come together, and then they split off into two separate tunnels. And... So you have the wall in the middle. The train is coming from, I think it's the right tunnel. And everybody yes. else goes and hides in the left tunnel. But like, you know, as it splits, you have to have the column so that, you know, there's the support. And Katniss hides just like flat on the support where anyone driving the train, if they looked like in the rear, they could see her. No one said she was smart. <laughs> <laughs> no i think also like it was weird that the, they decided to make it a train tunnel because i don't think they were train tunnels in the book i think they're just maintenance tunnels don't have trains going through them the, the, that tends to be the case with maintenance tunnels they tend to be for i don't know this thing called maintenance yeah so it's a bit weird to be like oh yeah there's a train underground in a maintenance tunnel they made their own problems. What 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 can I say? The films made their own problems. Yeah. So we go deeper underground, and we end up in a play. We end up in a rest scene. It's exactly like it is in the book for the most part. Pollux is always supposed to be awake. Pollux takes every watch because he can't sleep in the tunnels. This isn't explained but in the film, but we thought we'd explain it here. But basically, Pollux, who's worked in the tunnels, has nightmares when he actually tries to go to sleep in the tunnels, so he just can't sleep. There's no sleeping for yeah. him for, like, the rest of the film, basically, the book. Peta and then Katniss actually have a scene, and he, he goes, was I poisoned with Tracker Jack or Venom? Real or not real? And Katniss tells him it's real, and he tells her about shiny memories. Basically, any memories he knows that are fake, he says they're shiny. And he's still trying mm -hmm. to be... He's still trying to get through it. Then in the tunnel, they, they're supposed to, they start hearing Katniss's name being said over and over again. This isn't in the, this is only in the book, mind you. In the film, you hear something, but it's not Katniss's name. I don't know why they changed it. I think it's a lot more creepy in the book. It's significantly creepier when you just ominously hear someone's name. One thing, I don't know if it happens now or if it happens later. I, yeah. But it's in this whole sequence where Pollux and Castor actually have to ditch their, like, backpacks because they won't yeah. fit underground. That's not done in the film. Fine. Whatever. But, like, I just wanted to point out the discrepancy. Yeah. So they hear Katniss's name in the tunnel or they hear something. Katniss goes searching for it in the film. Um, No. In the book, Katniss doesn't go – again, this is the same again, thing I had a problem with the fog. we never said she was smart. No, no, but this <laughs> is the same thing that I had a problem with the fog in the last film. Oh, there's a deadly fog coming towards me. I'm going to go touch it because we did it. Because of did I mean, you never said because she was smart. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> It, it it's the same energy it's the same energy. It, it's just so stupid it, it's just like why do you have to take one of the smartest characters in fiction and make her dumb like it's like when you're watching a horror film and you're watching a horror film and there's the there's the random white girl who's about to die and you know she's about to die because all the close-ups on her and about to die and she hears like a thing in her closet and what is the first thing she does i'm gonna go look in the closet 
I will say, I don't watch a lot of horror films just because, you know, it's not my favorite genre. Like, I don't really enjoy horror. I don't need to be scared and frightened. Like, I have enough of that in just, like, life. So, (laughs) I'm just, like, I don't really enjoy that type of film. Some of the actors in those films, incredible. I do enjoy, like, thrillers. So, like, when I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time, I did really enjoy it. Because, like, for me, it wasn't a horror film. It was more of just a really dark mystery film. It's a psychological thriller. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I'm thinking I'm starting to like psychological thrillers a little more, but, de- Ooh, like, so not you might horror, like but, like, I know, I don't know, we'll find out. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Moving on, so, Katniss is dumb. <laughs> Katniss is dumb, and <laughs> in the film, PETA wakes up, it's like, we need to run, we need to go. In the book, PETA is still talking to Katniss when he's triggered by these mutts. He hears them in the tunnel and he's like, Katniss, you need to run. You need to go be safe. And it's, it's this moment of PETA only ca- like he's triggered by the mutts and Katniss is trying to console him. Katniss cares way. It feels Katniss cares way more about PETA in the book than in the film when he's triggered. It just was a bit like quite contradictory. So they start running and they're running as fast as they can. And they're supposed to be, they're supposed to get to a very tight tunnel. That's when they take the bags off on it. That's when they, sure, they won't fit. Yeah, I so, forgot where it was, but they don't take the bags that's, off. Minor that's, that's detail, okay. but yeah. That's okay. So they're all trying to get through this small tunnel, and they do. They do end up getting, all, all of them do survive this small tunnel. But in the film, they're just like, oh, by the way, Jackson gets killed off right here and then. Which, okay. I mean, Jackson just gets killed off unceremoniously. It's the most unceremonious death that I've ever felt. And it does get me mad because Jackson is not supposed to be killed off by the mutts like that. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain this whole sequence and then we're going to go back and explain what happens in the book and the comparison. I think it's a little easier to do it this way. Sounds good. So Jackson gets killed off by the mutts. The mutts are chasing them down the tunnel. Then Castor gets killed off. And they keep running and running and running and running. They go up and up and up. And then a bunch of other people keep dying and dying. And I'll, and we get to a water tunnel and where they're going to fight the mutts to the death. I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to explain what happens in the book up leading up to there. Because we'll okay. talk about, that's pretty close to them. So in the book, we go through this small tunnel and we end up running into a pod. So we have Pod on one side, and on the other side, we have a lovely uh, mutts coming at us. These mutts are these lizard-like creatures. They don't look like that in the film. They're like these white albino things. They look like Infry from Harry Potter. It feels like they took Harry Potter's Infry from Deathly Hallows Part 1. No, Harry Potter 6. that's very fair. That's very fair. Harry Potter 6 and went, went, okay, copy, paste, control C, control V. Yeah. I mean, somebody at Harry Potter might want to su- – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think – it's Lionsgate and, and Warner Brothers, two different two for different teams. But they do look like Infry from Harry Potter. It's the easiest way to describe kind of what they look like. They're just like these really large, white, humanoid creatures. And I like them more like lizard-like creatures that live underground and you're like, ooh, scary. The book – The lizard makes people, them they're out. They're, they're actually controlling everything. <laughs> so they run into a pod and they're all trying to get by it and mezzaline sets it off and dies by a big beam and so does caster so caster and mm-hmm. mezzaline both die together there they set off the pod they get vaporized it's a really sad moment pollux just lost his brother and if you guys don't know pollux and caster are based off of the roman brothers in the roman in a roman architecture and i think they both die in their original story Pollux doesn't die in Romulus and Remus. No, there's a different. They're based off like two Roman. Pollux and Castor are like actual Roman story. There's their names are based off them. Romulus and Remus are Harry Potter. Something that I learned when I was looking at the names. Oh, yeah, no, I know, but Castor and Pollux are two Roman people. There's a story all about them. They both die. Sure, I just don't know that story. I maybe it came up in like the Heroes of Olympus series. But oh, I don't remember. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. There's a lot of Roman I wouldn't doubt stuff it. in it. Yeah. So 
then they all are start running after they die. They keep going. So now it's only Cressida, Gale, Finnick, Peta, Katniss. There's only five. And every uh, they get Mm-mm. like halfway. Pollux. That's what I said. Yeah, six. Sorry. Cressida, no, Pollux, six. Katniss, yeah. Peta, Gale, Finnick, six. Yeah. So they're running. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden Katniss turns around and goes, where's Jackson and Holmes? Jackson and Holmes, when they ran into the pod, stayed behind to fight the mutts. They sacrificed themselves to keep the mission going. Now, that's what I call a death. That is something I would have loved to see. Not an accidental death for Jackson. Like, it just felt so unceremoniously. It was like, oh, who cares? Let's kill her off. No, Jackson was an important character. And you just went, we don't care what how they die in the book. Yeah, they kind of gave Jackson's death to someone else in the film. Holmes as well. Yeah, they kind of give their deaths to somebody else who we'll talk about in just a minute. So we run, we run, we run. There's only six of us now. There's only six of us in the in the film as well. Nope. Uh, I lie. Actually, it's hilarious because Mezzaline is now... Or Holmes is still with them, so there's still there's seven in the film and six in the book. There's seven. Sure. The beam thing happens later now, so they're running. Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. Run, they run into the tunnel, and they have this water tunnel, and the mutts are coming, and they're all fighting the mutts, and it's this big epic battle that doesn't happen in the book. No. So in the book, Finnick O'Dare tells everyone to go and he basically sacrifices himself to keep the mission going and he's fighting all the mutts by himself with his trident it's a beautiful blaze of glory and then katniss drops the hollow by saying nightlock three times and boom the death of finnick odare now i know Ankit was really upset i think he said in like the two books ago two episodes ago he said if finnick dies i'm gonna be really upset and i'm sorry i was Ankit. mad I was I'm really sorry, sad. Okay. <laughs> I read that and I'm like, no, Finnick, I liked you. Here's the I thing. I was so sad. Here's the thing, though. Finnick's death in the f- book in the book is a lot more dark and actually like written really well, and it makes you feel it. I felt in the film they kind of effed it. They made it. I didn't mind it. So in the f- the difference is I Finnick didn't sacrifice himself for the for the group in the film. It was an accident. Yeah, like he slips. Like he was, he, no, he was coming up and then he was grabbed and pulled back down. Which I think is a lot worse than he sacrifices himself for the group. But he doesn't actually. Oh, sa- does he actually like missing... sacrifice himself? Yeah, because the metaphor is Finnick, who people believed is the most shallow person with his looks and the way he was treated in the capital. This man who was so individualized sacrifices himself, all that he is, for Mm -hmm. Knowing that, like, you know, he's married to Annie and, you know, he probably knows, spoiler alert, but, like, you know, we never see the kid. But, like, he probably knows that Annie's pregnant. Yes. And we also he got busy on the honeymoon very quickly. So in the fight, which doesn't really happen, Katniss almost gets killed by a killed by one of the mutants, and then Peta kills yeah. it, and then Peta almost dies by a mutant. And Katniss kills it, and Gale gets slashed in the arm, and all this stuff happens in the film that's not in the book. But also, but in the book, Gale does get really injured by the mutants by the mutts, mm-hmm. and so they end up going through the tunnel, and they keep going up. So, but Finnick has a glorious death and dies. So they break through back into upstairs. Oh, they also run into, there's a moment, by the way, they also run into peacekeepers down below. They run into them later, but they, there's a moment and the mutts just massacre all the peacekeepers. Oh yeah. The mutts are like, ah, humans. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know why they said peacekeepers down there because they just die. (laughs) That's happened in the book. Not, in the film, not they Snow's run into peace, best plan. <laughs> they run into peacekeepers as soon as they get up, and they're running, and they set off a pod, and that's how, kind of how they escape because the pod separates them, and that's when Holmes dies. So we end up with six and six anyway. 
So here we are. Five and five. Six. No, five. Five, because Finnick. Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. five so we end up five. with five. So Cressida, Gale, Pollux, Katniss Everdeen, and Peta Malark are the only five surviving members of 451. And they've lost the hollow, so they don't have a map to Snow's Palace. <laughs> well, they don't oh, have like a, great. the hollow map. They have physical maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're doing fantastic. I don't see any problems with what's going to happen soon. No. Also, so one thing the... that they show before we move on from Phoenix's death and all of that, of course, is that in the book, Katniss sees Phoenix's life flash before her eyes before she drops the hollow. True. But we don't get to see that in the film, even though he slipped in the film and whatnot, or like he's dragged down. I think it would have been significantly more powerful if they just showed us that for five seconds real quick. Mm-hmm. So and then in the, we wouldn't have, you know, the discrepancy. Yeah. In the book, after they break out of the tunnel, they end up in another woman's house and she goes to scream and Katniss kills a random woman in the Capitol. No, that's earlier. No, no, no. This happens now. This does happen right now. That, I thought that was the first apartment. Nope. This is why I said they, they steal disguises here. Are you sure? Yeah, I read the book, like, not too long ago. I did, yeah, too. Last week. I, last week. Look, this I, is what happened okay, in the fair. book. I read the book, like, three weeks ago, so but it's I, been I a bit. It, I mean, I also reviewed it last week. But yes, this is where they break into a house and Katniss kills a random woman. <laughs> okay, fine. This is where, this is where they disguises. steal a bunch of and also here, this doesn't happen in the, this happens in the film and in the book, but this happens right after they run into stuff. Peter has a mental breakdown. He's like, "You should leave me," and Katniss kisses him, like the first time she's kissed him in a long while, and she's like, "No, I need you." And this is the first time Peter's mm-hmm. kind of almost turning back to normal. Like this kiss was like the kiss of life. Cressida then leads them to the next house. And we knock on a door. We're in disguises. We're hiding. We don't apparently need disguises in the film. We only need disguises in the book, but whatever. Yeah. We knock on a house and the door is open and it's a woman dressed who looks like a tiger. And her name is Tigress. And I think she is perfect. She is great. I also want to give a huge shout out to the makeup team because mm-hmm. Tigress's like, look in the film is incredible. It literally looks the same from what I imagined in the book. It's just what I see on camera, and it's great. You know what's crazy is when you read the prequel book. Oh, we'll Tigris get to it. Hold on, we'll get to it. Character. Stop, stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. That's for the next book, Steve. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to talk mention it. Really about- no, no, no. That's okay. not allowed. Okay. We can't talk okay. about the next book when we haven't gotten there yet. I haven't read the next book fully. Stop ruining things. Okay, so we end up going to Tigress' house. She hides them in the cellar. Katniss says, oh, I recognize you from the games. And Tigress says, Snow decided she wasn't pretty enough, which that is film only. There is She doesn't really speak a lot, Tigress, but you get a sense that she's kind of morphed herself into this animal and she hates yeah. Snow. So there's a lot of quietness from her. I understand why they gave her a line. I do like this idea of like, no, Snow didn't love my look anymore so i no longer get to be part of the games right katniss then tells the whole group the five survivors four survivors including her that she lied and basically they're all like yeah we we know we know you lied coin would never (laughs) send you on this mission are you stupid jackson isn't dumb jackson died dumbly in the film but jackson is not dumb yeah yeah yeah. um the only dumb character in the film is katniss yeah actually yeah (laughs) and then this is film only which i think is actually quite good though i really like this edition Peta starts naming all the people that have died so all the people that have died in the series that they've killed or have died or katniss has killed or because of katniss and Peta they've died and Peta says that they all belong to Snow. So he's the first one to say that. I think Katniss figures that out in the in the film in the book. I don't think she needs Peta. I think to tell it's her. like I think it's like her thoughts 
in the book, but I don't mind them giving it to Peta in the film. Yeah. She then turns to a nurse, and she nurses Gail's and Peta's wounds, and it's great. And then they all are sleeping. They basically stay in this bunker for a long time. A lot of, you know, it's a long In the book, it's like two there. days. It's like two two days or something in the book. Yeah. So then Pete and Gail have a conversation about Katniss and how Gail should have volunteered. And then he would still love her. And <laughs> they, they're like... They're like, oh, she'll only stay with whoever she can't survive without. And Katniss is actually really hurt by this because she hears it. Mm-hmm. But it is true <laughs> for the I mean, most part. It, not wrong. It's very not book accurate. Wrong. This conversation is very book accurate. She does feel very, like, weird about that. I mean, there's no, like, that. Like, you don't know her eternal dialogue. But, like, you can – Katniss Everdeen at least has a face where you're like, ah, yes, you're really affected by this Look, conversation. Jennifer Lawrence, good acting right there. Yeah. Then Snow comes on TV. He is offering all the children to come to his home. He is not all the children. Cut out. He's offering. He's offering all the refugees. He's telling all the refu- like not refugees, but like capital citizens. He's telling everyone to come. Yes, but in the film, he specifically said children. But in the book, it's supposed to be all the refugees. Oh, okay. I missed and, in the and film where he specifically also, said children. Also, in the book, he's supposed to tell everyone who's in the center of the capital to open up their homes to people as well, which is weird because that's not forced upon because the mansion isn't that big. It can't hold that many people. No, nah, the mansion's massive, man. What are you talking about? So then Tigris disguises them as refugees and PETA gets a nightlock pill and they're all going to go get the mansion. Katniss and Gale go to fight the mansion. I have some issues with the nightlock pill scene. I do as well. Go for it. Oh, um, uh, hold on. Is yours actually about the nightlock or is it like yeah. other stuff? Oh, okay. You give your gripe about the nightlock and then I'll explain my gripes. Cause my gripe is not about the nightlock <laughs> specifically. Mine's about that scene though. Oh, okay. So in, in, in this case, um, two things. One, it's meant to be really cold outside and Tigris, like, you know, does this thing called covering their faces so that they can blend in and, like, you know, actually gives them disguises, not just a coat with a hood on it. Like, Tigris is better than that. They did Tigris dirty. They made this actress who played the role very well go through all of this makeup and they were like, mm, we're going to nix your character and, like, not actually have you do anything because, like, we still need Liam Hemsworth and... uh jennifer lawrence's faces to sell the film because the audience isn't smart enough to realize that you know that's actually them just in disguise that's my first gripe (laughs) my (laughs) my gripe can i say my gripe before you say your second one yeah sure the reason why gail gives Peta his nightlock pill so so Peta's asked for the nightlock pill before because that was really important for him because he wanted a way out and they were like, no, you'll just take it and die right here. And nobody wanted him to die. And it was a big thing that didn't happen in the film at all. But Gail gives a nightlock pill because he's like, if I get captured, I know Katniss will kill me. Yeah. That is not said in the film at all. It's not said. I wish it was. It does add to the story. And it's weird because they could, they keep the next part. <laughs> of the of that interaction and they don't have the yeah. first one. it's like you can't have your cake and eat it too how many times do we have to tell these freaking adapters this steven i think at this point we just got to find a book that like you know people think is really fun that might not have an adaptation to it and i think you and i should sit down and try to write a screenplay for it and see what comes of it we'll be terrible at it though <laughs> Oi, I said try. I never said we were making the film. We gotta do the process before we come up with a good one. Fair. <laughs> so what was your what was your uh thing? Your you had another thing. Uh, you said another My thing second gripe you. is them leaving, right? So like fine, Tigris has done this. And then as they're leaving, in the book, there's a whole plan 
The plan is that Cressida and Pollux are supposed to leave first and they go blend in a little bit and they're like the front line of the thing just to like make sure and kind of see what's going on. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. in case there's something wrong, they can signal to Gale and Katniss who are following them, but like from a distance, kind of like a hundred meter distance, like, you know, they're behind them about a hundred meters, but it's so that Cressida and Pollux can like signal them if they're like, okay, like run back to Tigris or like, go do something like, you know, you got to get out of here now kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. That's not in the film. The other thing is that after Cressida and Pollux, so then like, you know, you wait like a minute and then Katniss and Gale and then like wait another minute or two. And then PETA is supposed to go out on his own to create a distraction so that Katniss and Gale can get up to the front lines and like, you know, break their way into the mansion, so on and so forth none of that happens and Katniss and Gale just walk out in like hoods and no uh, disguises and just join people. Yep. Okay. Moving on. So they, (laughs) Katniss and Gale are walking towards the mansion in the group and they're just walking. They're walking, they're walking and they just get there. In the book, yeah. it's a lot more crazy. In the book, a couple pods go off, explosions happen. Oh, yeah. They're running. The whole street falls down. Katniss is crying to climb. Gale gets captured. He's like, shoot me, Katniss. Shoot me. And she doesn't shoot him. So Katniss ends up on her own going to the mansion. Yeah. Also, another thing is like as soon as they walk out of the building, there's supposed to be floods of people right outside of Tigris's shop. Exactly. And when you walk out of the shop, it's completely barren for a little bit. That's the first time we see snow. I mean, granted, they've been underground for, like, the last, like, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, like, fine. I'll cut them some slack. But, like, you know, it's the first time we see snow, but they still don't cover their faces. I am mad about that, if you couldn't tell. But (laughs) then it was also, like, you know, it's completely barren. So if there's any type of camera everyone's just gonna know that oh they came out of tigress's shop it's like the flood of people is supposed to be in front of tigress's shop so that they can blend in quickly and people can't tell which shop they necessarily came out of yeah so here's the big thing that i think is really 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 interesting Mm -hmm. so they're in the group and they finally get to the mansion and there, a girl recognizes Katniss's face. Again, the thing that you just said where they're not covering their face and this whole thing. And they start to turn around and then the rebels attack. And this is what happens in front of the mansion. So then Gale gets captured by a bunch of soldiers then. Like they do break down a peacekeeper and take his gun. But then Gale gets captured. Katniss doesn't shoot him. She's running towards the children. Yeah. And that is when, out of nowhere... A capital she notices ship? something. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get to the capital what? ship. In the book, Gale yells to shoot, but Katniss can't tell what he's saying because of all the chaos that's happening. She oh, can only true. see his lips move. Whereas in the film, you hear, kill me, kill me. And it's like, like you said, you can't have your cake and then eat it too because you didn't set up that this was the deal between them, that if the other one got captured, they would shoot. Yeah, so we get to the capital. Now, here's a little bit of a darker thing that is true in the book. It's not really shown in the film, but in the book, the reason why Snow wants all the children is slash refugees is he wants to put all the children in front of the mansion as a protective barrier because he thinks that the revolutionaries would never kill children. Mm -hmm. So again, Snow using children to his benefit. I mean, he was a he did the Hunger Games for like seventy four years, so we yeah. I don't know why we're surprised about this. Like, cool. <laughs> we're not. Then we see a ship, a capital ship, overhead. Katniss, everyone's looking up, and it's dropping parachutes. He, and there's a guy who goes, "It's the capital," because they forgot to explain that all the ships were destroyed. But it has a capital symbol on it, and we're stupid enough where we needed a guy to scream that. No, again, it's. I think the problem with this film is a similar thing that's happening in Hollywood right now where Mm. screenwriters and producers are assuming the audience is dumb. Yeah. They're not allowing the audience to learn as we go. 
They're not allowing us to sit in the unknown. They're not allowing us to experience it. They're having to spell everything out to us. And it's why, if you see it, like, honestly, yes, there are really good films out there that are still coming out. But the mass majority of what you're seeing is just like, you know, why why is this happening? Like, why is this remake happening? Why is this happening? It's like, you know, and it's that thing that, like, they're telling us rather than showing us. And I don't know if you've seen Dune Part 2 yet. No. Cool. All I'll say is... I think the reason that it works, and Sebastian, our editor, will probably agree with me, because I think as of this recording, he has watched it five times in theater, if I've been keeping up with his Instagram properly. So, Let's go, Sebastian. Uh, <laughs> woo! He is single-handedly making them money. But <laughs> so, Hey, Sebastian, do you want to be a guest on our Dune episodes if we ever do it? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, we have two people that are saying that they want to be guests. One, I think we have to have Sebastian on. And two, my friend Sophia literally called me earlier today and said, Anki, if you guys do Dune and I am not on the show, I will find you and I will kill you. I mean, she's obviously joking. Hi, Sophia. But like... Thank you for supporting our show. We really appreciate you. Also, we will invite you on because I kind of need my co-host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um also like <laughs> sophia has been my friend for i i don't know like 13 years at this point like we're close um <laughs> great but yeah, yeah yeah she's wonderful anyway i think why it works so well is because mm. it lets you sit in the unknown it lets you experience things as they're happening like the character doesn't know what's going on we don't know what's going on like, that's okay. It's You're beauty. allowed to not know what's going on. So, that's what I love about this new anime I've been watching. It's called Solo Leveling. It's so good. The first uh, the first season just ended yesterday. And it's about this guy who basically almost dies from this incident. I don't want to ruin it too much. But basically, he becomes a... Uh, in a world where you can't level up, he gains the ability to. Oh yeah, you were telling me about this. Um, oh, a it's so good. Ago. It's on. It's on my Crunchyroll, and I love it so much. Well, so I no longer have access to your Crunchyroll. <laughs> I mean, I pay for it. If you want access, I'll give you access. I'll text you. Anyway, back to this film. <laughs> so these uh, parachutes with little packages drop, and all the refugees are getting them. In the book, only the people in the children that are in the refugee area get them but everybody's getting them apparently and everyone gets well, them okay and here's the here's the thing that i will say for the film like yeah. in the book yeah it only drops on the children in the film they probably dropped them with the intention that they needed to go to the children but probably told the extras like hey if one of these parachutes like happens to come to you instead because it's a parachute and we can't physically control where it's gonna fall reach up and grab it <laughs> so so they're holding the parachutes and they're all there and all of a sudden out of nowhere boom they all get murked they Back get merica'd they get merica'd so first bomb goes off and it basically almost kills everyone by the way the rebels are already here trying to attack through the peacekeepers and the rebel medics see this happen. And what do they do? They don't just keep attacking. No, they rush in to go save as many lives as possible. I mean, the rebels mm -hmm. are good people. At least the medics from 13 are good people. One of the people... Uh, Katniss, by the way, also climbs on a truck when the bomb goes off, by the way. Yeah, because that was smart. Her face is fully revealed and nobody can just go, Oh, look, there's the girl on fire. Let's shoot her. I don't know why they, they just... It, it was so dumb. It was dumb. It was dumb. Look, like we said, Katniss is the dumbest character in these films. <laughs> so when the bombs go off and they're all dying and all the medics come in to rush, Katniss sees a blonde wisp run by her in the book. In the film, she just sees the girl. And this girl is Prim. And Prim is trying to save lives. Why is Prim a 13-year-old on the front lines trying to save a life? Well, you're about to find out, everyone. Nah. This is when the second explosion goes off and Merck's Katniss back with an explosion. 
She doesn't really get to say goodbye to her sister in the book. In the film, they have this weird eye contact moment where you're like, okay, I know what's about to happen. Great. In the book, again, they have to explain it to you beat by beat. But in the book, Katniss just says, I think she made eye contact with me. Yeah. Like, she isn't she's also sure. Like, she's also like, she calls her name Prim, and that's when the second explosion hits. Prim is eviscerated by the second explosion. Katniss is caught on fire. And look at that. Katniss becomes the actual girl who was on fire. And on that note, we're going to take an intermission or a snack break. Or what are we calling it in snack this one? Break. Snack break. Yay! Snack break. Snack break. Hi, this is Steven. Thank you for watching Co-op Forge. If you like our content, wish to support our editing staff or all, please subscribe to our Patreon in the link down below. You'll get bonus footage and many other fun activities out of it. In our description, you'll also find links to our social media, where we'll post about our new episodes. Flip the Scripts is every Friday. Seattle Across the Pond is every other Thursday. And Post Finale is posted every Wednesday. Thank you for watching. Now back to the main episode. So we then wake up in the hospital, as you do, because this is literally, I think in Mockingjay, Katniss wakes up in the hospital more times than I can count. In just one book, in just one book, she wakes up in the hospital more times than I can count because she gets shot. She gets all this stuff happens to her. Like in her her defense, in her defense, she is in war and they keep putting her in dangerous situations. No, no, I'm not mad at her. I'm just saying it's so funny how like so many times she's getting knocked out by something that happened and she wakes up in the hospital injured. PETA choked her out. Like there's so much. There's so much. Oh, yeah. So she wakes up by a nurse in the Capitol. And she can't speak. It's it's gonna it, her her larynx is burned. And in the book for the rest, almost to the rest of the moment. She is mute for a long time. It's a bit in weird the because film, they decide to get so rid of that. Much. Yeah, no, just, and like I, not even. Yeah, and I think like I had a problem with that because it's like it, you're not showing us like in the book. I think why it's so powerful is that it's like, you know, she can't speak because of Prim's death. Yeah, and the in guilt. Yeah, the guilt of that and the questioning of why is the 13-year-old even there? Like, what's going on? Like, is she really dead? She can't really be dead. Like, there's no way that she's actually dead. And in the film, like, you get grief for, like, a minute. Yeah. You know, it's weird because I think people forget, like, the whole reason Katniss is in the games, the whole reason Katniss is in the Mockingjay, the whole reason all of this happened is because of Prim got volunteered. Prim was the name that got picked out of the hat. You know, in, in chapter book. one of the first book, it's Primrose Everdeen. She did everything for Prim, and now she doesn't have Prim. So mm-hmm. Katniss is on the bed, and her mom is her nurse, which isn't book accurate. Basically, after Prim died, her mom becomes a recluse and doesn't see Katniss anymore. She goes to save as many people as possible because of her guilt. Like, she can't handle it. She's she's yeah. basically, the day Prim died, her mother has not, has not just lost her, her husband, her lover, but she's lost both of her daughters. She no longer can look at Katniss. And I think that's hard. That's a really hard thing for Katniss. Because yeah. her, her and her I mom think already like, didn't have the best relationship. Yeah, I think in the book she says that she sees her mom once. Yep. But it's a bit weird having her mom be the nurse. I think that was Yeah, I agree. Was... I agree. That was the wrong move. They shouldn't have had the mom be the nurse. Honestly, they just shouldn't have had the mom in the rest of the film. And I think that would have just worked a lot better. So Haymitch then, in for some reason, because we need Haymitch to explain everything, Haymitch does not explain this to her in the book. Someone else does. I don't remember who. But Haymitch explains to her, the war is over. When all the kids die, even the peacekeepers put down their weapons because those were some of their kids. So... It was a big moment, and so the revolution's over. They've won. Effie shows up, which Effie is in the end of the book, by the way. Effie is in the book at the end. But because Effie's been in this book completely since the beginning, they just keep Effie around. It's funny. In the film. Effie then brings her to the mansion, is like, this is where you're going to be staying. No, she's already in the mansion. She's been in the mansion. That's where she's been nursed back to health. Like, she's always in the mansion. This is the thing. 
And yeah, in the book, I'm saying in the film, she's in the book. there the entire time. Yeah, so she's in the mansion and she's having a hard time adjusting. There's a scene that's not in the film that I really like where she tries to talk to Hamage about her guilt. Like she's asking what PETA mm-hmm. is and all this stuff and how coy. But she can't, and... again, she can't talk. So she's trying to exactly. She can't talk. But all of this she shows up, sign language. She shows up in Hamage's room and Hamage. In his glory, in his in his masterful glory, has found alcohol again. <laughs> Let's go. This is not in the film at all. Hamage gets re-drunk, and it's a massive thing. Where, for what Hamage has been through in real life, and this is something that's not mentioned in any of the books, but we know from Suzanne Collins. For those who don't know, this is not in any book, but I really love this backstory of Hamage. When Hamage won the games, President Snow was so mad about what he did with the barrier. He was so mad he used the capital's genius against them that Snow killed his girlfriend, his mom, his brother, everyone of his family, which is why Hamage drinks. Hamage has no one. And the first people he has are Katniss and Peeta, who he blames himself for getting Katniss getting injured, Katniss losing Prim, Peeta's problems. Like, he takes so much of the world. He blames himself for, like, has most to drink. of their problems exactly like it was he was drinking because he lost everyone and trying to forget and you know every single tribute that he had from 50 to 74 just kept dying like he first, may have because he was the 50th he was the 50th. oh right from 51 to 74 so 51 to 73 everyone just kept dying and it's like Maybe he did try a little bit, but then, like, maybe there wasn't a drive. Maybe, like, they had accepted death. But, like, you know, that weighs on you when, like, you know, you can't save the kid. And that's your job. Like, your job is to try to save the kid. And he wasn't able to do that. So, like, that's going to weigh on him as well. And so that's probably why he kept drinking. And then now it's because, like, you know, even though he was able to save Peta and Katniss in the games in the first one, in the seventy fourth mm-hmm. Hunger Games, it's now blown up into a much bigger thing, and he's like, I, "I, I take the blame for getting them into this situation." Exactly. So it's been a couple of months, I think, it ha- like a couple of months pass in the mansion. Like Snow's trials happening, a lot of things are still happening in Panem. It doesn't happen in like two minutes. It feels like in the film, everything happens in two minutes. Everything so, happens like the next day. <laughs> yeah, basically. We then cut to a scene where she's traveling around Snow's mansion. In the book, she's told she's going to be executing Snow the next day because Coin is still keeping her promise. It's weird in the film. They don't really mention – well, we'll talk about my problem with that. We'll talk about my problem with that later. We'll get there. But she's walking around the mansion, and she ends up walking and sees a greenhouse. And she's you know, walking over to the greenhouse. It's snowing, and there's two guards there. And the guards are like, you can't go in here. And Pollard, Commander Pollard's behind her going, let her in. Commander Pollard is not that important. She is supposed to be one of the guards of the greenhouse. And Commander no, no, Pollard no. In the, going, in the book, she's not She's not the person. No, in the book. She's not she's, there. She's, she, no, 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 book, no, no, no. She guard. shows up. She shows up. No, in the film, Just she shows she up. Did... In the book, she's there. She's not I one swear. of the guards. I... No, no, because there's a Steven, male and female Steven, guard. No. No, there's a male and a female guard, but it's not her. It's not the commander. Because even in the book, they stop her saying you can't go in. And then she says from behind, let her in on my command. So, like, they did keep that accurate. And because that's when Katniss realizes these aren't Coin's soldiers. I, I remembered it in the book, though. And this is my thing. I remember in the book being one of the guards was Commander Poller. The female guard was Commander Paler. No, and she no. The no, female guard wasn't Commander Poller. Hold on. I'm going to go get my book. Give me a minute because I am like 99.5% sure I'm about this. I'm 100% sure it was Commander Paler. Wrong. Hold on. I mean, I can go get my book. Figure my this right out. There. My book's right there. Do you want to go grab mine? All right. Well, I mean, like, we'll both go grab it. One of us will find it first. Go.
Okay, da da. That's. So there's a two men, a man and a woman, wear tattered, thrown together clothes of actual rubble, still bandaged and gaunt. They are now keeping watch over a doorway to the roses where I move, enter the guns from an X in front of me. You can't go in, says the man. Soldier, the woman corrects him. You can't go in, pre soldier, Everdeen, president's orders. I stand there when a woman speaks up behind me. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Sorry. I win. <laughs> Five. So she ends up so, going inside and yeah. she goes to pick a flower in the book. In the film, she's just walking around in the greenhouse and President Snow's there. President Snow tells her that flower is really beautiful. And they have a whole conversation about how Snow was an idiot, how they were both focused on each other. And Coin is the real enemy. And how Coin, this was Coin's plan all along. She wanted the district and the capital to fight so 13 can just get in there. Also, there is a comment that's made in the book that's not in the film that 13 started the first war. And this is the continuation of that first war. That 13 yeah. is the reason the first war happened. The capital never declared war. Like, 13 has always been the reason the war starts. And I think that's such a fascinating thing to think about. Like, 13 is responsible for the deaths of Panem citizens. And while all, all the other 12 districts were suffered from the Hunger Games, 13 was just chilling underground. Yeah. So, to I me... Mean, they had their own problems, but, like, still, they weren't being... Someone wasn't getting shipped off to the Hunger Games every year. But basically, he tells her that the shit that dropped the bombs was not him. He also apologizes for Prim's death. He says that he doesn't waste life, and you know that. And you know, he, yeah. she knows he know, you know that. And, and he's that like, I'm not Coyne above killing children. It. Yeah, he's like, I, you know I'm not above killing children. Both of us know that. But I don't waste their lives, and that is a waste of life. Yeah, and she said she doesn't believe him, and she said he says, "Oh, I thought we promised not to lie to each other," and it's a really, it's a really good line, good callback, really good callback, really, really good. Also, it's important to note this is the first time she speaks in like two months or like a month, exactly. however long it is in the books. Exactly, but in the film, you know, she's been speaking this whole time, so it's not as powerful. And she yeah. doesn't. She doesn't speak until she says she doesn't believe him. Like, that's the first thing she says after Prim's death. Yeah, it's just a massive monologue by Snow. And it then is. she says, I don't believe you. And he hits her with, I thought we agreed not to lie to each other. And she already had, a, to be clear, in her head, she already had a feeling that Coin's bomb, those might be Coin's bombs that kill Prim because she remembers the conversation Gail and Beattie. Gail had with Beatty. About the bombs, which of course happened earlier in this film compared to in the last film. So then she's in her room. It's the day of the execution all, all of a sudden. And Gail walks in. And Ga she's asked, she says to Gail, was it your bomb? And Gail's like, I don't know. And that is the last time we see Gail. She says goodbye and that's it. And he says he failed his mission to protect her sister he failed his mission to protect. Uh, that's her pretty and book like, accurate honestly like that's pretty much what happens in the book as well and gail and katniss are never friends again this is kind of the end of their friendship which to be fair makes a lot of sense gail sacrificed a lot of things for this rebellion that he believed in and he sacrifices he sacrificed his humanity and katniss can't have that mm -hmm. so then we go to a meeting with all the living victors. Not explained in the film. But basically. All of the living victors. Either were killed by the rebels. Or the capital. So Lime who was in charge of two. When we fought the nut is dead. Because she was a victor. And many other people have died. Yeah, my there feeling is seven Lime got that off are alive. By, my feeling is Lime got off by coin. Because Lime could have been also up for the ruling area. Yeah, 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 I feel the only ones that are left alive are the ones that Katniss fought for, or the ones that Coin could still control. That's what Coin felt like. Yeah, because so, who was who was left? We have Inabaria, Inabaria. Joanna. So those two: Katniss, Peta, Hamish, Annie, Pete, Beatty, and, and Beatty. Cool. Yeah. So one of the things I should say is. 
it's not explained in the book, but I mean, it's not explained in the film, but it's in the book. People are going to probably wonder why is Inabaria alive? She's from District Two. We hate District Two. She's alive because in the book, Katniss literally asked for her safety, so Coin had to keep her alive. Yeah, that was part of the agreement to become the Walking Jay, but they forgot to put that in the film. That's <laughs> so fair. it doesn't make any sense. Nope. But I mean, like again, the reason, in case anyone has forgotten because it's been a while since we talked about it, she requested the safety because she was like, it's not her fault that she got taken by the Capitol. Like, she wasn't in on the plan of, like, she wasn't in on the revolution plan. Like, she wasn't in on any of that to, like, break me out. But, like, I know what they're going through. Like, it's not her fault that she was put in this situation. So you shouldn't kill her. So... Coin explains to everyone that she's the interim president of Panem, which is not true. She is straight up in charge in the book. I don't know why they're like, nah, she's just the interim. It's fine. Because I do enjoy Hamish's line going, interim. How long is that supposed to last? I know. I really like that one. She is just straight up in charge. There's no voting for president because, you know, she's basically Stalin. If well, Coin is Hitler. Even in the book, she says like, we're going through a rough time right now. A lot yeah. has happened. So, like, we'll do an election after things have died down a little bit. And that's said in the film as well. So, in the book, she's trying. To, they're trying to find a way to calm the rebels down now. So, they need to do something big to calm the rebels down. This is not explained in the film. But in the film and the book, this is what is the similar thing is she says that they want to have a Hunger Games with the Capitol's children. This is a big moment. Everyone in the room was, like, shocked. A lot of the tributes are very upset. Peta's upset. Annie's upset. And they're, and she's like, but I couldn't get anybody to vote on it, so you guys have to vote on it. So the living victors, the seven of you, get to vote on it. The majority wins. And no one can abstain. That was a very and big no one, portion of it. Yeah, no one can abstain. So everyone starts voting. Joanna is the first to vote, and she votes yes. She's like, President Snow has a granddaughter. I'd like to see her in the games. And I'm like, dang, Joanna, you are merciless. I mean, I don't know why we expected anything else from Joanna. I'm here for the chaos. Like, she has stuck yeah, true to then, her character. Her character has always been fair. chaos. <laughs> then Anobaria, who also agrees with joanna which is crazy and like diversely didn't want her there but then she like votes for joanna's side and joanna's like actually i like you now so in a part <laughs> also votes to kill the capital children Peta and annie both vote no right after one of each other and they're like no there's been enough death we need to end this death and annie's like if finnick was still here he would have voted no and annie's pregnant by the way and joanna goes but finnick isn't here and it's snow's fault and there's a he- little bit of a tiff there so now it's two to two. BD votes no as well because he's like, there's too much death. There's too much. And I think BD personally also feels responsible for Prim's death in that moment. Yeah, it's not again, explained in the Thor book, but I, I think, do feel – I do love that connection. I think BD, it's the same way, right, where mm-hmm. he doesn't know. It's similar to Gale where he's yeah. like, I don't know if it was us or if it was them. Like I legitimately don't know, but I know – like, I think deep down, BD and Gail both know we're the ones that designed the bombs. Whoever did yeah. drop them. We're the ones that designed them. So, Hamage and Katniss are the last to vote. This is a gripe that I have with this scene. So, Katniss does vote yes. She mm-hmm. votes yes of her own accord for Prim. That's in the book. In the film, she ties her yes vote to her getting to kill Snow. Like, I'm like, this is already, it gripes me so much because it's stupid. It's like, yeah, Snow already agreed that you get to kill Snow in the last no, coin. book. No, Coin agreed that, coin, he gets, sorry. that she gets to yeah, kill yeah. Snow. Coin already said you could in the last, she had to follow through on that. And you were already being, by this point, Katniss is already prepped and primed to kill him. It was just such a dumb choice. It to wasn't make it needed. Here. It wasn't needed. It, it makes it seem like. Sh- Candace would have voted the other way, but she votes this way on purpose, and there's more tactic to it. This tactic doesn't feel well-earned. It doesn't feel smart. Mm-hmm. Again, they've dumbed her down. She's dumb. 
So then Hamage looks at Katniss, and Hamage believes in what Katniss has to say, even though the tactic is wrong. But if the tactic was correct, Hamage also believes in the tactic, and he votes yes. So it passes four to three. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, okay, it's time to go kill Snow. So this happens all at the same. This does happen right after. So this is true. She then is suited up in the Mockingjay outfit. She is supposed to be given one arrow to kill Snow and one arrow only. Not a sling of arrows. We're going to explain why that's a terrible choice in a bit. Do you agree, Ankit? I do. You just picked a really bad time to say that because I was taking a sip of water. (laughs) (laughs) Then she walks out. There's this huge boom, 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 boom. And they're like they're playing drums and everything. They're getting so excited. It's a whole fanfare. Is standing it's a with whole all the fanfare. victors. Coin gets up there and gives a huge, gigantic "I'm an evil villain" speech because it was stupid and dumb, and they think we're dumb as audience members. I said, could they have made it any more obvious with her speech? Could no. they have made it any more obvious? So then, I think the only Katniss way they could have made it more though. obvious. I think the only way that they could have made it more obvious is if, you know. She literally said, and I am now the ruler of Pan Am. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She had a Scar speech. It was basically a speech from Scar. <laughs> Honestly, from Lion King. like, Scar, better villain. <laughs> I agree. So she pulls out the one arrow, not the 17 arrows that she has in her quiver, but one arrow. And she aims <laughs> it at Snow. She's about to fire. And she moves it up. And no one stops her. And boop. She lets it go and it hits no it hits coin right in the heart and she dies. She falls forward too. Um I'm pretty sure that if and I, again, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, but the power mm. of the arrow should probably force her to fall backwards. Hey, we don't have time for physics though. <laughs> like <laughs> the arrow shoots her in the chest. One would yeah, assume fall that based on uh, physics, she should fall backwards. Because, you know, an object in motion stays in motion unless another force acts upon it. Yeah. So the yeah, arrow so would have stayed coin, in motion. Coin dies. And Ooh. falls forward. Yeah. And, and you also, know, then, the then, other beautiful then Katniss thing. takes out another. No, then Katniss takes out another arrow from her quiver and shoots Snow because she shoots no, Coin she first. Doesn't. Then she shoots Snow. I know because it was stupid. Why did they give her seventeen arrows where she could have just done that? If they give her one arrow, she has to make a freaking choice. <laughs> That's why uh, my joke was going. Okay, I'm sorry, I ruined because your joke. It's all right. In the book, they give her one arrow. So she has to make a choice. Coin dies or snow dies. She has one shot. That's it. In the film, she has 17 shots. She could kill everybody. She could be like, we're going out in a blaze of glory. Exactly. So she goes to take the nightlock pill. PETA grabs it and stops her. She gets arrested. A bunch of people run forward and basically kill snow. Um, And yeah, then a month passes. And she's basically been arrested for a month. That's in the book. In the film, she's only it's been arrested that for night. No, it's literally, literally like later that night. That that sounds about right. Hamage comes in with a letter from Plutarch, which again, is not in the book. But this is one of those things where the late Hoffman had passed away. Oh, fair enough. Seymour, uh, yeah, Seymour Hoffman had already passed away, so this is another replacement of that scene. Okay, I mean, Plutarch it was still does, a beautifully well done scene. Yeah, Plutarch does apologize to her in real life in the book and about keeping her as the Mockingjay and all this stuff. And he's really excited for the future of Pan Am. And he hopes we learn from history and it's peacetime. And he's really excited where that's kind of replaced by Hamage's letter. Sure. And they talk about Paler pardoning her, which is BS because she's supposed to be found guilty by insanity in the book so like yeah. well innocent by insanity but she gets tried there's supposed to be like a psychological whole thing and she's told you're you just have to live in district 12 for the rest of your life commander paler is now in charge apparently that's new that i that was not explained in the book but i guess that's who sorry that's who would become in charge if coin died so i guess that makes sense yeah i don't mind it 
Then Katniss and Hamish are walking to go back to 12, even though it's only been a day. It's supposed to be a month, whatever. So they're walking back to 12, and they're saying goodbye to Effie. And Katniss is like, I'm going to miss you, Effie. And then then Hamish is like, goodbye, Effie. And they kiss. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, all right, cool. There was no romantic capability between those two actors and any of the films, but I guess they wanted them to end up together. (laughs) or at least just like a kiss goodbye yeah so all all i had in my notes there was elizabeth banks in this scene is amazing yeah it is good then they take a quiet train home and move back into victor village i thought that it was a plane because like plutarch was on it and they stopped in like district five but i guess they made it a train i think it's a plane in the book I don't remember. I'm not too griped about it. They get back to 12. They get back to 12. And she lives there for a while as the rest of 12 comes back. So 12 mm-hmm. is supposed to come back from District 13. They don't. They just stay in District 13. It's a bit weird. So she only she's living in Victor Village with Hamage. Yeah. And Greasy Say, who is not in the film, who I love. I love this character. She's supposed to come in and force her to eat food and and she's also telling her, she tells her how Gail's in District 2 and she's never going to see Gail again and all that stuff. But that's not happening, so it's fine. She walks it's kind of house. like Greasy May becomes like a mother figure to her of like, all right, exactly. like we got to get you better. Like, it's okay. Like, you've been through a lot, but like, it's my job to like try to help you the best I can. And like, she comes in, she cooks for Katniss, helps her, things like that. Yeah. Eventually there's supposed to be a moment where buttercup shows back up at the house, but buttercup is just in the house when Katniss first shows up back at 12. So they skip a few weeks. It's fine. That's and fine. it's hilarious that buttercup traveled all the way back from district 13 to come back to 12 and buttercup is looking for prim and Katniss breaks down being like, she's dead. She's dead. She's throwing things. And that's when beautiful buttercup breakdown Katniss... scene from Jennifer Lawrence. Oh yeah. 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 That's when buttercup and Katniss, say uh kind of get to know each other and become friends again become friends yeah. for the first time ever but i also said, become friends yay i also said um i love that she throws things at buttercup gives zero fucks. <laughs> then she's supposed to get a letter from her mother to say goodbye her mother never said goodbye to her i don't know why they cut this and out she of the goes film. On a, i know she goes on a hunt and then she comes back to district 12 and she sees pita's there planting Mm -hmm. flowers and you know what he's planting he's planting primrose and it's sweet and it's yeah it's and they hug each other and it's so sad they then get a letter from annie who fills in the gap about Catherine's mother and gail and then talks about her son because annie knows everything and they only can do one letter i don't know why and then they're all i don't mind that it's with annie like i'm like okay fine like that's okay also, PETA nope. doesn't come back this quickly. Again, we're just no. time jumping a lot here. PETA takes like another six months to come back or something like that. Like it, it takes another like very long time for him to be able to come back. Ex- and exactly. when he first comes back, Katniss is like, what in the world? And he's like, no, it's okay. Like she gets really upset with him because she thinks that he's planting roses before like it's explained like, no, 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 it's primrose. Like, you know, your sister. <laughs> Um, the one thing that they cut from the film, which I understand why they cut it, you know, runtime, whatever, but they also, in the book, once PETA is back, they start creating this book of everybody that passed away, all the things yeah. that they liked, the things that they did, the family that they left behind, or like the family that they had. And it was a way to help them heal. PETA would draw the images. Katniss would relay the information that needed to be put in the book. And they kind of do it together. I think they mentioned that Hamish comes in occasionally. And like a a little later, like Hamish starts putting in people that he knew that like, you know, they don't necessarily know. But it's like, you know, people from his Hunger Games, like all the tributes that he had to teach over the years, kind of all of that. But it's like just a way to help them heal. It's not shown in the film i understand why but i just thought it was a very beautiful thing so then we cut to a scene of them watching the tv paler has won she says there'll never be any games and they say that no one ever wins the games 
and that because Plutarch is missing. They're like, "Where's Plutarch?" And I'm like, "Well, no, the actor passed away, so of course he's not there." No, and, Plutarch's there, they, just in the background. No, he's not in the scene at all. I think they filmed that scene after he passed away as no, well. No, I, I thought he was in the background because I thought that they had a line saying, uh, "Oh, there's Plutarch in the back," like just as always. I thought they said, "Where, where was Plutarch?" Because he wasn't in there. I could have sworn that I saw Plutarch. Listeners, let us know which one of us is right in the comments. Fair. Very on kid if he's wrong. Um, Why very Steven if he's wrong? Because I'm pretty sure I'm right. So Katniss and Peeta then are sitting in front of a door, staring off at a rainstorm. And it's all cute and lovey-dovey. And then they have a night together. And they kind of reminiscent of the Catching Fire moment. And they end the book. And the book and the film end the same way. And he says, do you love me, real or not real? And this question has been asked to Katniss before, and she didn't answer it last time. It's supposed to have been asked before in the tunnel, in the real or not real moment. Yeah, it's not asked in the film. Which is weird, because I like it being asked twice, and she has two different answers. Mm -hmm. So she finally says, real. She says, I do love you. And it's a really powerful moment. We then cut to an epilogue, and the epilogue is perfect. It is really well done. It is Peta has a son and a daughter now and with Katniss and they're very happy. Katniss is talking about how she didn't really want kids, but Peta wanted kids. That's not really explained in the film, but the film, the book feels more melancholy at the end. It does feel like Katniss is just trying to live life day by day and do what she yeah. can. Where in the, in the book I met, but in the film, she kind of smiles at the end. You get the sense that She's happy. There's she's hope. moved on. I think, like, yeah. I don't even know if it's like she's moved on, but, like, she has hope that her kids will have a better future. I had a yeah, couple which of is notes not... on the epilogue. Yeah, so it's good. I have one more thing to say. They also, do, she does her good things list for the mm-hmm. kids. And, but it does end with a happily ever after, because after three films, you do want a happily ever after. So I'll give the film a little more credit on the epilogue though. I do like this change. I feel like editing it with a little more happiness, a little more hope than melancholy is a better choice. Yeah, I agree. Now I also really liked the epilogue. My notes were kind of silly notes. One of them is silly. One of them is just like a normal note. Uh, The first one was I really like how they didn't try super hard to age them up in the epilogue. Yeah, like the they actors. Did that for the Harry Potter epilogue. Yeah, and it looked slightly weird. Whereas, like you know, they changed their hairstyle. They may have added like a mm. little bit to them, but like they didn't do too much to try to age them up. But it felt mm-hmm. natural. Like, yeah, you know, I think she's like thirty-seven or something. So like you know, they, they had to age her up a little bit, but like they didn't try too hard to age her up. And it's like you know. Peta and Katniss are still probably people like, you know, neither of them, they were both very fit before they went into the games, probably still exercise. And like, you know, it's very plausible that like they're still fit people. The second note that I have is a significantly funnier one where I just go, that is a chubby baby. Um, Cute baby, adorable baby, but he's a chubby baby and it is adorable. Um, I love chubby babies. Chubby babies. It it was a cute little baby. (laughs) I think. I think I was a chubby baby. I th- I think my parents said I was a chubby baby. I don't remember if I was a chubby baby, but if I was, uh, that's no longer around. Um, and then I mean, I'm just chubby in general, man. Like <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight. I, I like. I think I'm down four pounds since I've come Woo! back from England, which is crazy Yay. because American food is definitely worse for you than English food. Yeah. The third thing was a question that I have for you. Before oh. we go into our, um, you know, rating Ending of the segment. film and everything. Yeah. What do you think Katniss and Peta named their kids? Because it's never said. Ooh. I would like to think they named them after two of the most important people that affected them in their first and second games. So I like to think that Peta's son is named Finnick. Mm-hmm. And their daughter is named Rue. Okay. I nice. think that would be like a huge like in memory of those two who sacrificed both of their lives for them to live. Yeah. That's beautiful. I had the same thought with the son, where the son's name is probably Finnick. And 
I thought Rue was a thought that I had, but I also thought that mm. Primrose could be an option for the daughter. Oh, I felt like Katniss might still be too hung up on her sister. To yeah, name her I don't know. That. It's been 20 years, which is why I was like, maybe she's gotten to a point where like she can call her daughter Primrose. But I think if she didn't call her Primrose, you're right. She probably called her Rue. Ladies and gentlemen, and people who don't conform to any gender, if you want to post in the comments what you think their name is, or if you actually know what their names are because Suzanne Collins posted it somewhere, let us know. We'd love to really actually know. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, they're still unnamed children. I wasn't able to find anything, but like, okay. I don't know. I may have missed some random interview somewhere. So right. I was looking at Hunger Games Wiki and I didn't see any names. So I'm curious on what people think they might be. So that is the end of Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. We so we have a couple things trilogy. to do. We finished the trilogy. We still got one more book to go. Then we can leave the Hunger Games franchise forever. Because oh. they're never doing another sequel. So really quick, Ankit. Well, unless they do a TV miniseries. Ooh. I really hope not. We've had enough reboots and remakes. Just leave it be. Come up Fair. with something new. There are other films. Yeah, we don't need another Harry TV Potter shows. series. <coughs> Look, there, there are other films and other TV shows that are incredibly good books and series. Go adapt one of those. Yeah. So, Ankit, my yes. question for you is, what would you rate the film? Without it being an adaptation, just the film by itself. Don't even... Compared to part one, like part one doesn't exist either, just as the film of part two. 5.7. Ooh. I think I'd give it a 6.2 at least. D. A sure. D. I think they knew what they were kind of wanted to do and they set out to do it. Yeah. I think my biggest gripe with it is what we've been saying the whole time in these last two episodes is. They sped everything up, which yeah. I understand why they need to do that. They sped everything up. I think the other thing is in this film specifically, I just felt like Katniss was the dumbest person. And I was like, why are we trusting her? Like, n like there's Fair. no leadership skills that we see of her at all throughout the entire film. And so I was like, wrong. why are we following her? I don't feel like we should be following her. I feel like we should be following someone else. And then, oh. um, yeah, my third thing was like, I don't know. It just, parts of it fell flat. Parts of it just like, I, I just found cool. myself not caring that much. Yeah, and I don't really think the PETA Katniss relationship at the end was earned as much as I wanted it to be. I love the epilogue, but I don't think the moment before the epilogue ended was like, do you actually love me? Like in the book, it's earned. But in the film, if I didn't even think about the book, I don't think it was earned. Now, rating of the book, Mockingjay as a full book, because we did talk about the part one just as a film, but just the book. I think this book to me, I'd give it a solid 8.5. I'd probably give it about the same. Because I think it's a really solid book. I do like it, but I don't love it as much as Catching Fire. I think it, sure. it suffers from so much story to tell in a limited book. I think that Mockingjay actually could have been to another book. I think, I think Suzanne Collins was forced to finish the series. I think she could have had four books. I think, yeah, I don't know why she was forced to finish the series, but I did read that somewhere. That, like, there was some reason that she had to mm -hmm. finish it within three, even though I don't even think she necessarily wanted to. Again, I don't know 100% on that. So, listeners, yeah. if anyone knows anything better, please let us know. But that's my now understanding. Now we're hopping into the adaptation grading. Let's rate the adaptation. One through ten. On kick. Go. Go, buddy. Go. I think just for this film, right? Uh, just for this film, sir, we, we talked about part one last week, uh, two weeks ago. I'd give it like a solid seven. As an adaptation? Six and a half, maybe. Cause like, I think I want to give it a 4.5. Seriously. Yeah. I think they missed a lot. I think not, they did hit points, but I think that like, again, 
there's a there's a thing about like doing something but then doing it well and i think there's a different thing in adaptation where it's like yes you can have the thing from the book but if you don't actually implement it the way the book has it and it makes sense and it actually drives the story forward well enough then it that it's not a good adaptation i would rather them keep the keep the characters acting like the characters in the film and follow the follow what happened in the book mm. then them follow what happened in the book but not keep the way the character is supposed to act fair i think the reason that i'm willing to give it a 6.5 is that like you still hit the major points of and like you hit most of the major points and the major points you didn't change like there were changes in between it but for the most part this film the major points when it hit hit them well okay so we've now graded the book the film and the adaptation so this is the first time we've ever done a part one part two obviously caused by the harry potter schism so what i mean by harry potter schism is Harry Potter decided after six long movies, they were going to split the last film into two because they wanted to get closer to the book. And that was Harry Potter's choice. And every other fantastical series went, ooh, did it work? Did it work? And actually for Harry Potter, it did make up them a lot of money. So a lot of, co- a lot of companies started copying the part one, part two motif for the last film. Now, did it work for Mockingjay? Part one and two. Was it smart to split it into two? No. I... Jesus, okay. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> Scared me with the f bomb over here. Jeez, Sebastian, I hope you complete that. Gosh, um, that one was so... passionate. That one was way passionate, more than I was going to give it. I mean, well done, sir. Well, I give my hats off to you. Uh, no, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, F no. Uh, no, wait, I'll say it just like Hunger Games. F*** no. Part one and part two of Hunger Games made no sense because while they, while they continue to try to tell the story that Suzanne Collins, they waste so much time with additional stuff that they didn't need to tell the story of. It felt like oh, we have so much time, we can add so much to it. But then we're like, oh, wait, we sacrificed the actual stuff from the book. I so, honestly feel like if they just made it like a longer film, right? Yeah. Like if they just made it like instead of two two-hour films and they kept true to the story and they made it like a 245, three-hour film, they would have made so much more money in the box office. It would have been so much better received and people would have actually like i don't know i guess go back to the series like with harry potter i'll still hear people being like oh i go back and watch harry potter every year Mm -hmm. right or like every christmas i start watching harry potter again or like once every couple years i'll go watch it it's a similar thing with like lord of the rings people are like oh yeah like you know they're three and a half hour films if you're watching you know the director's cut which is the proper i'm sorry four Four hour films editions. if you watch the extended editions, which is the proper way to watch the films. But like even like with those two series, for example, people keep going back to it. Yeah. I don't hear that happening with the Hunger Games films. I hear it I f- with maybe the books, and people are like, oh, that book series is wonderful. Whenever I'm talking to someone, they're like, Yeah, that book series is beautiful. But it's never I enjoyed the film series. I think, and this is a really interesting point. I think when they decided to make it a part one, part two, people got Hunger Games out. But what I, what I mean by that is, part having splitting the two actually made a lot of people not watch it, and they didn't want to watch part two, or they watched part one, and part one wasn't as good as it could have been. I think part one is worse than part two. Actually, I, I do think part one is worse than part two. Yeah, because part one doesn't have an ending, because you're you're ending in the middle of a book, and it didn't make people want to go see part two in the fil- theater. So they just waited for a streaming service, or they waited for it to come on DVD, or they waited for, or they just didn't watch it. I think the last Hunger Games I watched before I watched Mockingjay, I never finished the Hunger Games franchise. I ended at Catching Fire. I watched Catching Fire and I loved it. And then I heard they were splitting into two films, and I lost interest. And it's such an interesting thing 
that in that that decision to make it two parts actually got rid of a, a majority of the fan base. I think you're right. If it was one film, it was one film, just one film. I think it would have brought people to it. And I think like I the also, fan base and like you see it now, right? Like I think yeah. at the time, when did these films start coming out? It was 2009? No, no, no. Something like that. Hold on. I'll look it up real quick. So Hunger Games, like this one, part two, came out in 2015. Well, that's what I mean. But like the first one, I think, came out in 2009. Uh, Maybe? I thought the first one came out in like 2010. Um, Let me check. So as you can tell, Ankh and I did not agree with the part one, part two split. And I think that's fine. If you like the part one, part two split, tell us in the comments. If you didn't like it, tell us in the comments. We want to know if you agree with us or not. But we think that splitting it into two parts actually hurt the adaptation more than it helped the adaptation. And it gave the director and writers too much freedom and to do stuff that didn't make any sense. Too many additions that just kept dragging down the runtime, like a plane flying for five minutes to District 12 in the first part. Oh my god, it's so unnecessary. Or like her sneaking away to go join the fight in this one. It's like, what? Like, no. It just didn't make sense. Enjoy. Yeah. If you enjoy our banter, you enjoy us, please follow, like, subscribe, do all the things. Um, and thank you so much, Ankit. It's been a pleasure. Sebastian, thank you for being our editor. And Me. we'll see you later. Bye. Oh, wait. Before we leave, I mean, we've been hinting at it, but like we should maybe let the people know that next week we are going to finally be talking about the Songbirds and Snakes, which is the prequel, and it's the story of President Snow and kind of like how he came into power is my understanding i haven't still fully read the book i am working on it i will before we record but that's what we're doing next if you want to read the book if you want to catch up on the film just so that you are all aware of what we will be discussing next week peace out bye everyone Hello, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of Flip the Scripts. Flip the Scripts is created, hosted, and produced by Ankit Madeira and Stephen Nyman. Our editor is Sebastian Hollich. The art is by Kshatija Madeira, and the music is by Sebastian Hollich. If you like the video, you can click to listen to the next part, or if it's not out yet, you can find one of our previous episodes. Or if you want to check out some of our other content, here's a fun video from another one of our shows. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, comment, and hit that bell icon to get notified of all of our content when it releases. Subscribe to our Patreon if you want bonus content. Links to all of our social media and Patreon are in the episode description down below. Thank you for supporting our content. Come back next week for more shenanigans from Co-op Forge. New episodes for Clip the Scripts release every Friday, Seattle Across the Pond every other Thursday, and Post Finale every Wednesday. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye now.